everybody, and uh, welcome to the Dairy Girls uh, Masterclass. I'm really worried that you guys can't see. Are you okay? Can you see everything? I'll try and shout a little bit now. Hello, hello, hello. Um, can I just have um, a show of hands in terms of who works in the industry here? If you work in sort of film and TV, any members of the public? Hello, hello. Are you all fans? Yeah. Hooray, hooray. Well, uh, today we have not one, not two, but eight members of the cast and creative team for you. Uh, now, as you'll know, earlier this year, four Dairy Girls and a wee English fella made their blasphemous <laughs> debut on Channel 4. Um, it's set in the early 90s, in Derry, of course, and Lisa McGee's nostalgic, hilarious family comedy quickly garnered legions of fans, critical acclaim, and record-breaking viewing figures. Can I just say massive congratulations to you in, in particular and all of you. So please, will you join me in welcoming, there's a lot of names to get through here, writer and creator Lisa McGee, executive producer Liz Lewin, director Mike Lennox, and, of course, our cast members, Saoirse Monica Jackson. We have Louisa Harland. Nicola Coughlin. Jamie Lee O'Donnell. And Dylan Llewellyn. <laughs> always, always slightly left out, Dylan. Always just left out. Uh, now, this is a masterclass, so we are going to be discussing the development, the production, and also the reception of the series, but it is your masterclass. So I want to just remind you that, of course, we've got the festival app. We want your questions. You're here to know about the show, but also to get answers to any burning questions if you're trying to break into the industry or trying to get your own series away. So please do use the festival app. If it's not working, let's face it, it often doesn't, then you can just uh, shout out uh, at the end and I'll kind of like direct that. Um, but in the meantime, we're also going to have, and this is a bit of a festival first, which is exciting, a live script read from the cast. But before we do that, let's just uh, remind ourselves of series one. <laughs> So, you heard the laughing there. Uh, I mean, absolutely hilarious. But I've, I've got to ask you, Lisa, why the hell are you writing about your teenage years? Most people <laughs> want to forget their teenage years. Yeah. What was it about your life, and you know, especially in Derry, that you just thought, this is just genius comedy material? I think I've, I've always liked stuff, and Liz has too, stuff, and Mike, actually, stuff about teenagers and um, movies mostly American movies and my so-called life was one of my favorite um, TV programs when I was younger um, well when I was young um, <laughs> but I, I also felt that at the, me as a teen I was never represented and and you know the Northern Ireland I knew and the friends that I had I never saw anything that felt really true to my experience so I always thought what when I got the chance it was something I'd love to do but it, you know and I think we were saying earlier that chance doesn't come for a long time it had a lot of other stuff b b before this so, so did you guys feel the same way that obviously you've not seen you know good teen certainly not teen northern Irish because obviously we've had skins and stuff like that but you've never seen northern Irish teen drama is that is that right yeah I think it's partly that partly because Lisa and I have spent a long time working together and I don't think you always know why the specific things that you're talking about or your experience are funny. And I think maybe it took some other people going, that's mental. Yeah, <laughs> what? yeah. To make you go, oh, maybe actually there is something in here that's a bit different or gives a slightly Do, different flavour. Can you recognise that it's mental? I can. Well, like when I moved to London and I was there a while, I would be like talking to Laz and stuff and going, you know, you know the way that, you know, the army would search your car and she'd be like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, and then I sort of went, oh, God, this is unique, <laughs> you know. Um, and um, now I completely can see, as an adult, looking back, that that's, you know, an, an odd set of circumstances, yeah. 
Out of interest, how difficult was it for you, and obviously as the exact Liz, to, to, to get this commissioned? Because you're right in saying it is a unique scenario, it's a unique proposition. Did you find it an easy commission or, or was it a struggle? I think, um, well, Luz and I have worked together for 10 years and we had done another sitcom called London Irish, which was on Channel 4. So we had this relationship um, with Channel 4 that, that there was, I mean, it's it, it taken a long time to get to this point, but I think there was real trust um, yeah, when I came to write something new for them. That, yeah. It was actually a really straightforward Which is quite a process. boring. <laughs> But I think it's the end of quite a long road that was yeah. maybe less straightforward. OK, so which is really important to hear, I think. Yeah. That, I mean, it's great to hear that, that, you know, as two very successful women in television, that you're saying this was a straightforward commission, but it's not always been that way, has it? Because London Irish wasn't received so well. No. So talk to me about, you know, your experience in terms of um, struggle, really, and, you know, reaching this point now where you've had a massive success, but it's not always been like that. I think um, for me, when I started my when I started writing for TV, I was writing a lot of, and I loved it, but a lot of sort of English characters, and um, there slowly seems to be more of an appetite for regional stuff, which, which is brilliant. And I just think uh, that stuff's more interesting. We're hearing all these new exciting voices um, because of that. But I don't think Derry Gears would have been made ten years ago. If you, oh, okay, really? Um, yeah, I, I think it would have been. I think I sort of had to go through all those stages to, to um, be in a position to be allowed to write about my own experience, if, if that makes sense. Interesting. And also for, for you guys, the cast, would you have got this kind of these parts 10 years ago, do, do you think? Have you... No, not at all. You didn't get scripts like this sent to you. Like I was sent it, um, I was doing a play and I was doing a tour of the UK and I was sent the script and I remember reading that, that line, I'm not being an individual on my own and thinking, oh my God, that's genius. But like it, the characters are so well-rounded, even though it was a comedy, there was nothing spared in it. It wasn't like a two-dimensional portrait. They felt like real people, but certainly I'd never had a script, anything up to that level ever. Mm. Interesting. Tell me about Derry because it feels as though it's a character uh, you know, in a, and of itself. Was that a very deliberate um, act on your part that you wanted it to feature so much? Yeah, I, 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 it's a big... A, 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 the sense of humour is so much connected to that place and it's, it's a place that, you know, as, as a bit of an underdog, dog, but it knows it is and it sort of enjoys it a bit. Is it? <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so it's just the, these amazing people, I think, who've had lots of struggles but have still managed to have a real sense of humour about it. And I think everyone that's from there is sort of fiercely proud of being from there. And, you know, and, and the fact that they like the show is brilliant because I was, that's what I was terrified of, that they would go, that, that doesn't, you know, doesn't re 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 reflect yeah. us. Yeah. And is it a funny place? Yeah, it's, it is. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's, you know, there's sort of like, there, there might feel like there's a surreal element to the show that exists on conversations. Really? Yeah. I don't know what this conversation's about anymore or why we're, you, you know, like, I was there last week and I said to my mum, you know, we, we need to be five minutes because I have to do something, you know, in town. And we went and she was like, I know, I know. And we went into every shop and we spoke to everyone that she'd ever known in her whole life. And then she was like, see people in this town, they just chat the arm off you. And it's like, you've <laughs> done this, you know. So it's, you find yourself in a lot of sort of, you know, things would drive you mad. But I love the, I love the sort of... Familiar app. Yeah, the, yeah. Way they, the way they are with each other there. How do you, all of you, get the tone right in this series? Because obviously it, it, it's a comedy, but it's also profane brilliantly. Um, it's also sometimes very touching, but it is set during the Troubles. So how have you managed to get that tone and, and that, that balance right? I mean, obviously, Liz, you're, you're the exec. So have you had to sort of step in at all and go, I think, maybe the tone here? Not at all, actually. And also, I kind of think, in a way, my feeling about the tone isn't the most important thing. Like, Lisa and the Northern Irish people involved in the show have a much better sense of where those lines are, and I wouldn't yeah. deign to ah, okay, so, interfere so, so with you, that. So you, you step back, but the, the Northern Irish guys, are you sort of going, oh, have you ever sort of gone, oh, I'm not sure that this is going to go down well, ever? Never. There's, okay. there's a very um, 
dark sense of humour in Northern Ireland. Yeah. It, it would be too dark to put on screen, actually. Really? The way, we speak, the way we speak to each other, but you could never, never use some of the jokes. That um, because there's had to be, they've had to find mm. ways to cope with stuff that's such a small country and the troubles affected everyone. So they've, there's just had they've had to have a sense of humour about it. But um, I think as well because I'm from there, you, I hope I know where the line is. I hope I know what would have offend me or you know. So um, do you think that you could maybe have even pushed it even further? With, with Channel 4 in terms of that, that line, because you're saying, look, you could never put half of this on screen. Do you think you could push it a bit further? Yeah, maybe, but I mean, I'm always conscious of all sides of it, and of, you know, because there's, there, there's so much terrible, there, there's a lot of terrible things that happen. You want to be respectful, but sort of bold as well. So it was, it was just always about, and there's some jokes I sat on and went, oh God. Could um, I? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, and, and some I didn't do because, I just thought I can't really fully stand by that, you know. But um, for the most part, I think the 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 tone of it is sort of that we we sometimes don't take very serious things seriously, and I think that comes across. Yeah. In yeah, and in the reverse, sometimes yeah. you take oh, very yes. unserious things very <laughs> seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a chop shop order. Yeah. Everyone's going to speak again. Yeah. <laughs> You know, or a half load of washing. Yeah, but is that true? I mean, is, oh is that what it was like in your family? Yeah. The chip shop order is just, you know. I get too stressed now. I have to leave the room. When <laughs> <laughs> serious, yeah. Let's talk about um, the look and the feel, Mike, yeah. because it's set in the 90s. I obviously remember that very, very well. I mean, you know, you guys are playing teenagers. I was a student in my 20s then. So all the music, you know, I, I absolutely identify with. Just explain to me how you created and the process that you go through to make sure it's bang on well no first of all the 90s is a real it's a real gift you know for any director <laughs> to sort of feel you know the music so there's already a wealth and a basis there to the feel from but there's been some brilliant there's been some brilliant films in northern ireland about the troubles and about this side but sometimes i feel it's been one-sided okay and we wanted to sort of be really positive and warm and fresh, mm. do you know what I mean, with the sort of the visuals of the show. And there's a real energy, do you know, Lisa's writing. And it's about reflecting that, you know, through the visuals. So that's sort of the, the starting off point. And I think for me, when I do anything, I always try and find one image that sums up the show. And there's this amazing image, I wish I had it, where it was um, four schoolgirls coming home from, coming home from school and walking past, you know, a checkpoint, not a car in the world with just a massive, just were massive amounts of pops of red and color, just sort of indifferent because it's so normal, yeah. you know, to the background. And yeah. that's what I wanted to put through the full way through the show. I didn't want it to be in your face. I think that's what's brilliant. The yeah. balance is really good. The army are there, but it's not the focus and it just comes in, you know, at the right point. You, you do definitely feel that, that carefree sense don't you yeah. when you watch the series that these terrible things are happening but at the same time these normal hilarious teenage lives are also going on you know parallel to it did you please tell me you loved wearing the clothes <laughs> i was like i'd be keeping that i, I had the best I she got, yeah we were always really jealous of what yeah. jamie lee got if someone yeah. else got a scrunchie one day we're like why does louisa have a scrunchie, <laughs> I, a scrunchie. I didn't like wearing the ski pants i will admit whenever every time i walked into the trailer i was like oh my god claire and i don't share the same Style, so and they, they, they got worse, didn't they? The they got, they got stretchier. They got stretchier, the knees got baggier. <laughs> they were just the Can we have like... that line again about the ski pants? That made me laugh out <laughs> I loved loud. that. We really struggled to film that as well. I think you yeah. were getting a bit like, right, guys, come on. Because yeah. every time I went to say it, the camera was behind her and she kept going. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you can't keep making that face because I can't do this line. Do you remember? Also, the lamp like, exploded that day. Oh, I've tried. And Jamie Lee and I were like, no, nope. we, we ran out of the room. <laughs> the, the, fire. And the, cur the curtains really were on fire, and we were terrified. And we were like, we're not going back in there. No, no, no. Yeah. We did. We did eventually. We did. Cool, but I, I put it out though. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put it out the, the second time, not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know the line I'm talking about, everybody, about the ski pants? Upon them of your hole. Yeah. <laughs> Those ski pants are a crime, but you still oh. put them up on your... Oh, um, you, what did you say? You can't... What was it? Uh, can't. It's wrong. It's wrong. Oh, I, and I said, so are those ski pants, Claire, but it doesn't stop you pulling them over your hole this morning. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Love that. I'm going to be using that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> now, in, interestingly, Lisa, you spend a lot of time on set, and I was really surprised to hear that, because I 
thought that writers weren't welcome on set, <laughs> but you're always there. Why? I mean, does that not just drive you fucking nuts, Michael? <laughs> no. No, because I see it as an asset. Do you know what I mean? Lisa lived that sort of life, and it's a direct line, do you know, on set, do you know, all the time. Also, I've known Lisa for 10 years, <laughs> and um, I think we have similar tastes, and I understand, do you know what I mean, her sense of humour, so we've already got that sort of past, do you know, yeah, history. Yeah. So on set, it was, it was just, it was, it was just never an issue, do you know, at all. I think every job you do, sorry, I think for me it's about figuring out the dynamic in the room, what's going to make the best show. So set aside ego at the door, director has to do this or whatever, it's what makes the best show. Now I'm very interested to hear this because I'm slightly obsessed about how people find the best way to work within a team. So you were saying earlier on that it's really important to you that you're collaborative. Just, just take me through and take us through a little bit how you choose to work to get the best, all of you, to get the best out of each other. What do, what do you do? Well, I think to me at the very beginning, it's just being extremely honest and having an honest conversation. So at the very beginning, it's just how are we going to work? Yeah. Do you know, on set? Yeah. It's just that simple. And then once you get that out of the way at the beginning, you never need to talk about it. Yeah, because you know I, I remember at the start saying to Mike, Mike, because we'd never work, we know each other a long time, yeah. we'd never worked together. And I said, you know, I'll probably be beside you at the monitor. And he's like, that's absolutely fine. And then when I wasn't beside him at the monitor, he was like, where's Lisa? Lisa needs to be over. So yeah. uh, I've created this thing now that, you know, but it was like nearly the, my worries, it was, it, I had nothing to worry about. It was the opposite. Mike wanted me involved more and wanted my opinion on it, everything. And I think that that's because he wants, you know, it's just more efficient as well. And he, he wants the best show and yeah. It just, it takes too long. <laughs> People, if you're, if you're, if well, I've you're, seen the chip shop order. Never no, but if you're, a, if you're a video village, and you have to shout, cut and wait for a note, the energy's died. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you want to get to go again, yeah. so you yeah. just want to get the notes out really quick. Yeah. So do you get more takes? So, so you guys have got a, a bit of a shorthand going on anyway. You've known each other for a long time. You're very collaborative. In terms of the cast, how did you approach telling the bosses basically how you like to work? So, Louisa, did, did, you, did you have <laughs> any particular um, notes? No. I, I don't think we had a conversation about how we work at all. <laughs> Now's the time. Yeah. We just work. We, yeah. just, we just work. We, we were just so grateful to have the job. We were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We were convinced the whole time we were going to get fired. <laughs> it's true. We were just so sure. And the last day we went to McDonald's drive through the driver took us back. And we were like, lads, we didn't get fired. We, we finished it. We did it. <laughs> we, were so, we were just really happy. So that was really fun. But I think that they all have their th Like, Louisa's thing is to see how far she can push what ridiculous stuff she's doing in the background. <laughs> and it's like, Lisa, can I stick the lollipop on my eye? Can you ask that? And you're like, no, Louisa, because that, you know, she's always seeing every, how she can be funny in every single second of it. So, and I think they all have their own thing that they, their own approach to, you know, and that was what was great about working together as well, because obviously doing comedy, the more we got to know each other, you can sort of guess what's going on behind you. Um, and sort of <laughs> yeah, yeah. know that vibe, which is brilliant. That's a, a good point. Did you guys all know each other before no. No. this series? No. 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 You got such a great energy, genuinely, because obviously well, I've met you before, you know, in, in, in the green room as well, but you're very comfortable with each other. You clearly like each mm. other. Did you do any work? beforehand in terms of that sort of bonding? I think, sorry, no. I think that we had a very long um, audition process and I think um, we all wanted the job so much that you're sort of in this vulnerable situation together so when we started the job we were so supportive of each other and obviously it's a, it's a real experience and journey to go on so yeah. we, we did become best friends naturally yeah. and we're all living in these apartments together so it was really like, nice. Yeah, you yeah, film like 14, 15 hours a day and then we'd go back and have wine and chat and Stuff. We spent an insane amount of time together. We, uh, you know, yeah. and we, we, still, we still do. Like, I yeah. think it, it doesn't go a day without one of us talking to um, the other. Like, group chat and everything. Yeah. So you're working together 14 hour film days because we know they're very, very yeah. long days. Then you're going back to the apartment, you're <laughs> yeah. all living together. No, well, we had our own apartments, but we were oh, in the same block. block. Yeah. But we right. would... Do you not just get sick of each other? I mean, no, how because how we really? we're all so funny. We're all, yeah. 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 so <laughs> great. We're, we're all class, really. Right? We're all so class. It's so great to be around all our class. And we're so people. humble and yeah. there. And we're all very different. <laughs> yeah. Just t tell me what appealed to each of you about the character that you play. So, Sisha, what, what, what really 
inspired you? I love the, the selfishness of Erin and just how <laughs> completely self-absorbed she was. I just love the fact that um, Erin's Aaron's intentions were never executed fully or the way she wanted it to be, but she still had this romantic idea of herself that she was so class and so smart. <laughs> and even though her friends are always right around her, she just can never say sorry, never accept that they were right. And I, that really rang so true to me. I wouldn't say I was <laughs> as selfish or self-absorbed growing up, but there definitely was moments where I thought my parents were trying to ruin my life and no one understood <laughs> how amazing I was. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously I grew up and now I'm really, really nice person. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Lee, how about you? Um, I just sort of love the feistiness of Michelle and that she just really didn't give... Did, I really did swear. <laughs> <laughs> didn't give a fuck about anything and just sort of... I just sort of love that she obviously has, I th she obviously has all these, these friends that are quite different to her, but I think she likes feeling like she's... Like the cool one in the group and like, do you know, she's sort of like leading the, she, she's higher in the standard of the group, but she's just like the best of a bad bunch. She's not, <laughs> like to the rest of the school, she's a, she's about crap. But in this circle of friends, she's like, I am the shit. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So she has to stick with everybody because if she steps out, it's like, oh, I'm shit, back in. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And but, I just love that about her. But she is a feisty character and you're yeah. actually a, a feisty girl uh, as well. I get the impression that, that you're very, very... <laughs> Where do you get that? Straight... <laughs> straight <laughs> what are you on about? You're straight talking. So th yeah. there's a lot of you in this in this character. It's there like... is, definitely. I think that's great with whenever you can get a character that you can relate to because it just sort of makes the process a wee bit easier. And, and um, obviously then with the writing, you take it like 10 steps higher than what you would ever do. So you're like, yes. Yeah. You can just sort of go for it. And um, I just, it makes it a bit easier if there are similarities. There's not loads. People were like, you're exactly like Michelle. I'm like, I'm not. She's <laughs> mental. I'm not that. <laughs> I would, you're you know, exactly like Michelle. <laughs> yeah. so people do. They're like, you're so Michelle. I'm like, no, I'm fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola, are, are, you, are you like, like your character? I don't think I'm like Claire, no. I think they think I'm a massive. I mean, I'm a bit of a nerd anyway, but not in the way Claire is. I wasn't like. You're the most different to your character. I think I I'm think. the most different, oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but both of us are probably both quite different to our yeah. characters, but I really love that as an actor where you can totally just get rid of yourself and try and Be just get in else. this. And Claire was so well written that, that I, I, you read the, like a couple of lines of script, I was like, I know exactly who it is. <laughs> I knew who my Claire Devlin was in school. And like, it's just so much fun, but it's like, it takes a lot of energy to be here because she's shitting herself the whole time. She's just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, so I just be like, you come up, like, I'm so tired. I've been doing that all day. I think that, that's interesting to hear. I think yeah. we often forget with performers just how exhausting oh my God. it is. And especially yeah. if, you, if you're playing somebody so far away from who you yeah. naturally are. And as you say, you're so sort of tense but all the it's time. It's really fun though, because I was living with these girls. I told the girls this story last night. I was living with these girls in Peckham and they had friends over and we were chatting for a few hours. And then one of them, one of the girls hadn't seen Derry. goes, so I was like, oh, I'll show you a clip on YouTube. And her friend leaned over and went, I love this show. And I went, oh, thanks so much. And he was like, <laughs> and then she went, no, she's in it. And he was like, what bit were you in? I was like, oh, really? All the episodes? <laughs> <laughs> and then he just looked at me and went, oh, shit, you are? I was like, yeah. I've been talking to this guy for hours and he had no idea. So that, I, I, that's quite fun, actually. I like that. <laughs> well, we, 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 we'll come back to this later because we were mm. talking about, yeah. you know, the fact you're very, very famous now and, you know, do, do people recognise you? <laughs> However, so, Louisa, how close are you <laughs> to your <laughs> Probably closer than I would like to admit, but um, <laughs> um, I enjoyed the freedom of playing Orla massively. That's definitely my favourite part about it. And I just got to eat really class sweets all the time. <laughs> oh, you did. So, you had uh, the best sweets. We were oh, always so jealous. We're like, go on, push pops and uh, wham bars. Wham bars. We were so jealous. We're like, give us a wham bar. She was like, no. She's really well behaved, you see. And we were just like, please. And she, she would never give us a I'm well behaved. She's very well But I, after the 15th wham bar. <laughs> Yeah. It gets a bit old, but um, <laughs> not that old. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got the wee English fella. Yeah, I'm Do probably it. the most like my character. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think what, what I love about James is that um, he, I like the arc he has of he is very vulnerable and all that, but he, the girls do toughen him up and he, he does bite back sometimes. <laughs> Not very well um, <laughs> because the girls shut him down, but he's trying, he's trying. Is it like that on set for you? Because you've, you've got some very strong women. Here. Yeah, they're all Answer really wisely. big personalities. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I just listened. <laughs> 
Oh, God, no, honest. You know, he went and got us all breakfast in Starbucks this morning and brought it back to the hotel. He's well trained. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't like him. No, no, no. You need to support him. He didn't his own way. He's so happy he is. The slave labor. That's for good to help. Nicola was doing all his washing when we were filming, so. Yeah, it goes both ways. We take care of him. We do look after him quite a lot. Yeah. He looks after him. I feel less sorry for you now. Yeah. We um, are really, really lucky to uh, be able to witness these guys doing a cast read. So, what are you going to be reading for us? Which, uh, which, which, mm, and which series? Years. Oh, <laughs> I think oh, yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> episode three. It's, it's episode, episode three, three yeah. and I think it's scene three. Is it? I'll be doing Hamlet. It's a couple. <laughs> 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 a couple of things Ron and Andy chime, that's right, doesn't it? Ah, uh, a few different ones. Um, is it always like this? Is, is this what the rehearsal room is yeah, like? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Should we check yeah. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, you guys go out. Okay. Yeah. I'm put my glasses on. So I'm going to do stage directions. <laughs> yes, Lisa. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Ready to rock. Quinn House, Aaron's bedroom. <coughs> Close up, an old photograph of Granda Joe smiling in his armchair by the fire, the family dog curled up on his lap. I just can't get my head around it. <laughs> the fact that he's gone forever. She's sitting in a bed wearing her pajamas. The gang are scattered around the room, also sporting nightwear. The curtains are drawn and the floor is cluttered with notebooks, fluorescent highlighters, pens, pencils, etc. Claire has her head buried in a textbook. She swigs a Red Bull and is surrounded by a dozen or so more empty, crushed cans. It's so sad, it really is. It's so, so sad. <laughs> but at the same time, you know what's done is done, so let's crack on. Oh, I'm sorry, Claire. <laughs> has his sudden, tragic death interrupted your studies? It has a bit, actually, yeah. Why can you be so heartless? Oh, don't cry, Aaron. He's in a better place now. I mean, unless he's not, you know, unless, <laughs> unless he has gone to hell. Can we talk about something else? I'm half torn. This is wrecking my head. What? Have you been drinking? Yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> and for future reference, if any of you invite me to a study sleepover again and I'm desperate enough to accept that invitation, there's a good chance I have a litre bottle of Peno in my bag. I shouldn't even have to sit the exam. You know, on compassionate grounds. He was a dog, Aaron! <laughs> Toto was more, much more than a dog. Toto was my best friend. Oh, Christ, I feel like a buggy. Michelle stands, draws the curtains, opens the window and sticks her head out for some air. Claire's confusion quickly turns to horror. <laughs> it's the morning. Sweet suffering, Jesus, it's the morning. What are we going to do? <laughs> well, maybe we could start with calming the fuck down. <laughs> Calm down. We're still on William of Orange, Michelle. We haven't so much looked at the family. Oh, we know the gist. They ran out of spuds. Everyone was raging. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't tell my rebellions from my risings. And whose fault's that? If you're allowed to stop invading us for five fucking minutes, to be a lot less than <laughs> English prick. I mean, it's nothing's going in. Nothing is going in, and every time I try to take notes, I... What's happening to me? <laughs> How many of those have you had? I don't know. Five? Twenty-three? <laughs> we are all so fucked. <laughs> Bishop Street, the gang head towards Bishop's Gate, the arch of the historic dairy walls. Claire swigs from an energy drink. It's abuse. That's what it is. It's abusive. Does anybody have 10p? I'm ringing Childline. You can't ring Childline every time your math threatens to give you a hiding. Yeah, you can't waste Esther's time like that. And anyway, you're not alone. We're all going to fail. We're all going to get our holes kicked and we're all in the same boat. <gasps> I don't want to be in that boat. I want to be in a different boat sailing down in a totally different river. Guys, all we can do is try our best. Oh, don't be such a frit, James. Oh my God, look. <laughs> At the end of the street a pl is a police checkpoint. At the feet of one of the officers is a little Jack Russell. It barks up at an RUC man. Doesn't that dog look like Toto? I suppose it does a bit, yeah. It looks exactly like him. Here, boy! Come here, boy! The dog runs away and Aaron chases after him. The gang follow. Here, boy! What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm acting. God knows I'm still pushed. <laughs> Class. We're going to be late. But it's freaky. Don't you think it's so freaky? No! It's just a dog that looks a bit like another dog! The dog turns a corner and heads for the entrance of St. Agnes's Church. Quick, come on! St. Agnes's Church, an, an ancient and beautiful Catholic church filled with ornate paintings. Candles burn on the altar. Aaron looks around wildly. They all are soon join her. Where did he go? I don't really give a flying fuck. Let's get out of here. Yeah, where's Claire? 
<laughs> Towards the back of the church, there's a huge statue of the Virgin Mary. Claire kneels before it, hands clasped in prayer. Of course, trying to butter up the big woman. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou. <laughs> oh, well now you'll definitely pass. Well, it's worth a try. The others look at each other. She's right, they kneel. I'm not going to bother with any of this never sin again material, because let's face it, we've been there before. You know it's balls, I know it's balls. Oh my God. Claire, what is it? She, she, I saw it with my own eyes. Saw oh, what? She smirked. Hey, big M. Yeah. <laughs> she just smirked at me. Claire, are you sure you didn't just... Jesus, me too, she smirked at me too. Why isn't she smirking at me? She isn't smirking at anyone, James. Oh, I just saw it too. The holy smirk, thanks be to God. You're imagining it. The three of us saw sound, how do you explain that? Sleep deprivation, perno, delusional personality disorder. The muffled bark of a small dog is heard. Aaron looks up, a dog's tail pokes through the floorboard, floorboards of the choir loft. There you are. <laughs> um, Aaron carefully follows the little dog across a pew. I mean, it's uncanny. <laughs> The gang minus Aaron stare up at the statue. Okay, okay, right. Let's do it at the same time. Everyone look away. Right, so on three. Choir loft, Aaron draws closer to the little dog. It stops by the organ, lifts a leg. No, 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 no. He starts to pee. One, two. I'll have a better respect. Aaron escapes through the cracks in the floorboards. Three. The dog finishes and races off. The sound of Claire screaming from below. The others gasp in amazement. <gasps> no. Way. Aaron leans over the balcony. What? No. Aaron joins the gang. They gaze up at the statue in total astonishment. Water seems to have run down the statue's face. <laughs> She's crying, Aaron. She's crying real tears. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, please, God. God, no. This is bad. <laughs> I said we needed a miracle, and behold, we have been given one. <laughs> this isn't a miracle, Claire. <laughs> the exam, Aaron. It's all going to be okay. Listen, Gareth. Fuck the exam. Sorry. This is huge, Claire. Do you really think they're going to make us sit an exam after seeing this? The thing is, you may have a point. Of course <laughs> I have a point. We are the motherfucking children of Fatima, people. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to tell you, I've never enjoyed an Edinburgh session as much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, the critical reaction to the series, understandably, has been phenomenal. We've got uh, a load of headlines up there. It's just been an out and out success. Now, I, I want to get this right. It's been Channel 4's biggest comedy launch since 2004. It's amazing. Yeah. And the biggest series ever in Northern Ireland, ever. Are you surprised? by that. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask, I, I think I should probably ask the, the, the Irish people, are you surprised or did you kind of know that actually, yeah, in Ireland? Of I think that when we got the scripts, we definitely knew that it would be so successful at home. Being from Derry myself, I really felt like it reflected the people, mm. it reflected that sense of humour and I definitely knew it had never been done before. But I don't think any of us could have ever imagined for it to resonate so well across the water the way it did. And that was so, it's the amazing thing about it and the lovely thing about it, that people connected to this not even really given the background but they connected to these girls and they connected to the big family and what it's like in a working class family in a working class town yeah people just got it immediately it was amazing like that like, when the first episode came out because we you know we'd finished filming in july and it didn't come out till january so it was a big wait for us uh, to see it but it was insane because i had talked to dylan about it and i said that you know irish audiences are really harsh if, if very honest yeah. but really harsh if they don't like something they will tell you so i said like i kind of thought it would have a very small dedicated fan base but none of us knew it would be so it's crazy such a standout yeah. and, and liz i mean for you back in england i mean i know a lot of you now live in london as well don't you yeah, yeah. yeah. but back in england were you surprised yeah were you <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, I'm really interested to, to hear this because i've, I've got to say, I, i'm quite surprised as well. I mean, the fact that it's, it's the biggest Channel 4 launch since 2004 and, you know, such a massive success is surprising. Why do you think it has resonated with people? I guess because I think Lisa's just done an amazing... Well, obviously, everybody's done an amazing job, but yeah. in terms of balancing up what is specific about it but also what is universal about it, like, I think 
again, the, you know, we've talked about the family and we've talked about those kind of, yeah. you know, quite universal teenage things, but in a really particular place and with really particular voices. And I think she just hit it right. So, do you think it's, it's partly about timing then? Because we're sort of coming back to what yeah. we were saying earlier on about the fact that London Irish didn't work yeah. so well, and yet this really is. I think... We do love London Irish, by the <laughs> way. Yeah, no, of course. Of course. <laughs> no, I mean, and London Irish of was a great... Not, this makes it sound... But it was a great training ground, even though it was its own thing, and I loved doing that, and it was a very special show for me. Um, but I'm glad I did it. First, I think I was really worried. I think these guys are much more confident than me. I was worried about the accents. One thing being Northern Irish, which London Irish was, being Derry is something it's like people in Northern Ireland don't understand what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. Then, to be honest, I was worried about the four female leads. I was worried that people wouldn't want to watch that and young wow. wouldn't be interested in young women. So I was really, I thought the same as Nicola, we'd have a small dedicated fan base but I, I, I was pleasantly surprised that people just went you know we like these characters and I think people were ready for a group of young women that were bold and were not um that were making the mistakes and were doing the bad things and were the horrible people mm -hmm. because I don't always want the women I watch to be strong and perfect and they always you know interesting women on tv sometimes always have to have the great job and you know mm -hmm. sometimes they're just as stupid as the men and mm -hmm. that and peop, you know that's enjoyable I think so, what you yeah. did really well as well is that you didn't make a show about teen girls that are just boy obsessed and it's not all the it was more realistic. Really reused trope. Yeah, because we all talked about it when we were in school yeah. that we were really obsessed with our female friends and I'd never seen that really properly reflected. I'd seen it in like stuff like Freaks and Geeks but with guys and the in-betweeners but it was guys so it's, it's amazing to be part I, of. I remember you actually saying to me, um, it was part of the, when, the audition process and I, it was something that really stood out for me and I thought this is brilliant the way, like, the way you were looking at it and I remember someone had said, um, should, we, should we see a softer side of Michelle? And you're like, no, women don't need a fucking softer side. <laughs> <laughs> don't need this big harrowing story as to why a woman is strong or, yeah. or crass or, or, you know, <laughs> she's just a bit of a dick and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. I was like, I, so I, I find this Definitely. really, really fascinating. And we didn't talk about this earlier on in the green room. The fact that you were slightly concerned about four female Which leads terrible, yeah, and that you were perhaps asked to you know should we be moderating this character mm. no so you know absolutely partly this is about timing isn't it yeah and the fact that it's it's it is time mm. to see strong women funny women stupid women yeah you know, women swearing. Not, not looking glamorous and not like like we <laughs> when we watched the first, <laughs> yeah. the first screening we were like the double chins <laughs> oh my god but then actually i kind of grew to love them because i thought you know we're, we're not acting like oh my god i'm clear like we're not trying to be pretty or elegant mm. or anything like that and like Mike was so great with not like holding us back so we kind of were pushing it to be weirder and weirder <laughs> and we used to back on we're doing too much this like too much faces and too much but that's but honest at the same time because totally. that's that's what you're like when you're a teenager yeah. you don't have that self-awareness and that was definitely one of my favorite things about all the characters mm. they're, they're they're not yet women they're they're still children yeah and that comes in their physicality that comes in how dramatic yeah. their reactions are talking over each other and that's the whole package mm. of this madness together yeah. and it's yeah. real life as well that's what that's what girls are it's what women are yeah and it's nice for women a woman to write this and be realistic and not be about boys and it's other things like that you know what i mean it is realistic what has the fan reaction been because you've been really kind of like uh, yeah inundated haven't you yeah uh, so we, i think we've, we've got some uh, yeah we've got some social media and the memes up on here. Uh, sexy priest brilliant absolutely brilliant so just just tell us a, a little bit then so nicola you've you've got some good stories haven't you oh god yeah we've had such mad stuff sent to us um <laughs> Same, Sears and I get a lot of letters from middle-aged men, which is sort of unsettling. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think you see me looking like that and you go, okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, there's so, like, the minute the show came out, literally an hour later, there were memes. Yeah. We, were, we have a group chat and we were sending it to one another going, how, how do people... Yeah. Because we, we were filming and Jamie Lee said, oh, I wonder if Slaunch and Motherfuckers will become like a catchphrase. And we were like, yeah, right. <laughs> and it's just, it's so, it's so intense, yeah. But yeah, we get sent stuff all the time. We get sent presents and I got a t-shirt with I'm not being an individual on my own sent to me oh, which is great fantastic. yeah I love it Do but people are it? so kind like people are so generous with us and they're so supportive they're 
The only thing is, though, sometimes is because my character is quite mad and they assume that that's what I'm like. So they'll come up to me in the street and be mental. And I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's probably like, <laughs> it's like, Ugh. like this. It's just can be about much, you know. I get, I just get mums and grannies hugging me and giving me kisses on the cheek. That's oh. my biggest thing. I was in the airport. I said, Come here, you. Come here, you. Yeah. <laughs> just grab me. Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, but Louisa, you were saying you sort of fly under the radar. You get ignored. <laughs> I, I'm happy to be ignored. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't really get noticed that much, and it's, it's fine. It's fine by me. But yeah, I. Uh, when, when these, people do, I'm like... You get it the most, oh. for sure. So, 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 so Sisha, you, you, you get it a lot, do you? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Do you like it? Is it difficult? It's so lovely. I mean, the response definitely that we've had at home, it was really... When the show first came out, I was actually doing a, a play in London. So I wasn't home for six months after the show came out and I was on the phone to Jamie Lee and she was telling me, like, Sisha, it's absolutely mental. And I thought, well, I'll definitely calm down in six months by the time I get home. <laughs> And I got off the flight and I was like, this is how David Beckham must be. <laughs> <laughs> Actually mad. Like, I get a lot of flip, a lot of free blow dries now at home, so I'm really, really soaking that off. Oh, <laughs> it's been lovely. Worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> now, Dylan, I, I mean again, I, I constantly worry about you. <laughs> I'm happy listening. maternal. Do you also get hassled? I mean, now that you're uh, friends. Yeah. I've actually got a lot of um, interest from uh, gay guys, uh, yeah. um, right. which is sweet, yeah, which is nice. Every um, cloud. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I get told to leave him alone a lot. You better leave him alone. I'm like, They're like, don't bully him. I'm like, we don't bully him. We're <laughs> really nice to him. <laughs> who, who still lives in Derry? Me. So you still live in Derry. Mm. And so, so people genuinely think that you are your character, don't, don't they? Well, they would sort of approach me like that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they would always... It's just it's very loud, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like shouting across the street and swearing at me and people keep trying to buy me shots, which is okay on occasion. <laughs> yeah. But like in a bar, people try and like value you, like, can I value you like, taking a shot? So I'm like, no, it's two o'clock on Tuesday. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the bar serves food, that's why I'm there. <laughs> um, but I can get, I can get a lot. How are you coping with this newfound notoriety and, and fame? I mean, I think we again often forget that you are performers you're ordinary people uh, and so to suddenly be, be thrust into the limelight to be so successful can be overwhelming mm. yeah. so are you managing with it it's yeah. quite mad like i think now if like i forget if i tweet like i had like 800 followers on twitter before the show came out and i have like 20,000 now so that like i forget now sometimes if i tweet something stupid that a lot of people will see it. My agent like emails me. She's like, I see someone's been tweeting again. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> really sorry. So Emma. <laughs> but like, I I don't feel it as much. Also, I was really unsuccessful for a really long time. So I'm like, this is great. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. happy. Yeah. I worked a lot of crappy jobs, so I'm just like, that's all good. It's fine. But I, I was amazed, Louisa, really on when you said I've only just quit my pub job. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Yeah. People think as soon as you do a show that you're just unbelievably successful and loaded and you're a millionaire and people are just throwing job offers at you. It doesn't really go that way sometimes, you know what I mean? It can have a bit of a lull after, after I'm only starting to really work now as well. I, I did have a few months where I wasn't doing much and it's just one of the, those yeah. things, yeah. you know what I mean? I, th I think that, that's, that's an important thing to mm. hang on to. Is totally. even though, mm. And social media is very misleading and I'm yeah. sure all yeah. Mm. Miss it in it, like, but you'll just show when you're working and stuff. You're not gonna be like, oh, I had a really boring day. I yeah. had a sandwich. Like, that's yeah. not interesting <laughs> to care. But <laughs> there's a lot of time where you're like, you're still constantly rejected for jobs. And stuff. Yeah. It's all very normal and just part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, it could be very very hard, but it is yeah. part of, of the oh, process. Oh, it's all part of it. Yeah. Now moving on to one of uh, the other characters in the show, one of my favourites. <laughs> Sister, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Sister Michael. <laughs> Lisa, please, I'm begging you, please tell me that she's a real person. Yeah, like, um, <laughs> she's a few, a combination of a few teachers. <laughs> I had, I basically went to that school, it's very thinly disguised in the TV <laughs> series. It's, um, and just these women that you were terrified of, and they just had this, po I don't know if it's still the same, but we just were petrified of a, a number of teachers and one one of them was a nun. I'm always afraid she'll she'll be watching. <laughs> I was gonna say, is she still alive? I I'm yeah, I met her um at an event in Derry and she obviously I don't know if she's seen the show but she said, you know, good luck with all the work and God bless you or whatever and I was like, she's just so annoyed at all the swearing on it and she you know, but like yeah, so you, I still get about oh my God when I meet one of my old teachers, you know. 
But yeah, they're just one of those real no-nonsense. Um, yeah. She's genius. She's genius. And, and having been brought up in the church as well, I recognise her. <laughs> I absolutely recognise her. Siobhan, who plays her, is probably the funniest person I've ever met. Yeah, she's really? so funny. In oh real life. Yeah. Different. She, but she gets livid when we're doing things without her as well. So she's definitely going to be following what's going on on I was Twitter. Gonna say, like, this, this could go down really badly then. If <laughs> no, she, yeah, she'll, yeah, she'll be raging. She, yeah. She'll be raging <laughs> at us. She'll be like, you're having fun without me. And be like, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. I think this is the thing about things being part of a longer process of almost on London Irish that's where we as was the guy who plays the priest and a number of people and it's just we developed these relationships where we knew she almost dead funny and we wanted yeah um to find a yeah, character to find for a role her. That she and she absolutely is right for this role like yeah you know, so yeah I think it, that that's that's what they like, have those experiences are, go are good for. Oh, yeah, for London Irish as well. I remember a, that, yeah. Of a long you know? collaboration you know, yeah. where we've learned a lot of stuff. Some of it's worked, some of it hasn't worked, but finally we've ended up here, but it's taken a while. Yeah. So, famous people, because yes. I'm sorry, I just totally lost my track because I'm so obsessed with Sister Michael. <laughs> but, uh, I am... Um, I've heard that you've had famous people in Ireland as well approaching you, very well-known people saying, I want to be in the show. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you able to say who's, who's approached you? Um, prob I probably, well, I mean, the thing is, they're all great, but it's just, uh, there's not, it's, <laughs> there's so many of them already, so I'm like, yeah. I'm having a hard time writing for the nine of them. I think there's maybe 11 when you include Jenny Joyce, the yeah, prefect, yeah, yeah. as it is. And it's the idea of adding, you know, new regulars or anything. I'm just like, oh, well, there'd be no, you know. I if there know. was any room for anybody, who would you like to see? Um, I absolutely, well, should... Go for it. Go on. I mean, I, I love Ardlo Hanlon. I'd love... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I just think, and we worked with him before, and he's just got that real. I think you love watching him, and he's funny, yeah. you know, and you like him. He's got that likability thing, so yeah. And so it is, is there maybe a hint that he might be making an appearance? We haven't even started casting, so, <laughs> so there's no hint. No. Okay, no, no hint. No. And, but you are no current. Things. And I think that <laughs> most of the parts I write tend to be women, so there's, there's often, like, even new, you know, so there's often. He could play much. a nun. <laughs> you could play a nun. Uh, am I right in thinking that you are in pre-production for series two? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you, you go back to work on Monday, I think you yeah, were saying, Monday, yeah. for this. Uh, I think it's also really important to say that uh, when Mike and I were chatting <coughs> earlier on, that you were saying, this is only my, my second job in TV, is that right? Yeah, that was, yeah no, it's my first <coughs> comedy in for, TV. Right, first comedy in television, and you were saying you, that you find this much, much harder than the other stuff that, that you've done. Just why is that? <laughs> <laughs> All square <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> Working with Eve, getting out. <laughs> I think for me anyway, my limited experience doing comedy, when you're on set, it, you know, it has to work. You know, it has to work on set. I think it finds black and white. If it's not funny, you're not going to get away with it in the edit room. I think that's what I found. When I've, when I've done some drama in the past, maybe you could go, Oh, we'll fix that in the editor, we'll come in it from a, a side bit. But in comedy, it was much more black or white. Mm. Yeah, it's precision. Mm. It yeah. is, so... It's te more technical, yeah. really, isn't it? Yeah. I find that really, really interesting. As somebody that, that doesn't do comedy, I, I find that a fascinating insight that it has to be so precise yeah. and that you can't just fix it in the edit because, you know, the stuff I do can always be fixed in the edit. But that, that is a, an insight into your skill, I think, that you, you have to be so brilliant on set. Um, and certainly in terms of the writing, performance and the direction is very interesting to me. Um, so you're, you've gone into pre-production for series two, you're about to go into pre-production, but you're not giving the cast <laughs> any tips, are you? No, no, they keep trying to get me drunk. And, uh, <laughs> it's just, yes, yeah, we're not telling them anything because we don't want to sort of, uh, people torture them and we don't want, and then, you know. You just don't trust us. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's probably That's right. That's <laughs> a little bit true. It's very right. Fine. Is this where you sort of want to say that you're dropping some of the characters? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Just too scared yeah. to say. Imagine. <laughs> this is the place with that serious news. This is where we're going to tell you. Every current nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we, we are actually very nearly at the end of the session, but as I said earlier on, it is your masterclass, and this really is, is for you. So I'm very keen to get your 
questions. Now, there are... So, oh, I always have to reach sort of miles. I'm, I need very vocals for this. Uh, so, hang on. We've got questions coming through on the app. Um, OK, let me just try and find Hi, Lisa, you've been waiting. OK, well, we've sort of... <coughs> hang on. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to filter. OK, the cast have posted some amazing behind-the-scenes antics on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any highlights of what you got up to when the cameras weren't rolling? Oh my god, there was so much stuff. <laughs> there was so much stuff. What were we talking about? The coffees? Yes, oh I, my god, that was terrible. In the last week, <laughs> um, they went out and got us iced coffees, and Louisa wouldn't let us drink them until we finished them. She's like, guys, guys, no. Louisa's going to do this. Louisa's really, like, really, really good and professional. Oh, and we should hire her. She's so brilliant. unlike your character, Louisa. Yeah, <laughs> um, but like, we were like, we really need them. We're really hot. Just because like, it was the middle they of the summer. They needed their iced coffees. Yeah, not really bratty. We got at towards the dog. end. And then one day, Saoirse was like, we're so humble. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she, saw, she, she saw a photo of us one day and said, we're stunning. <laughs> we are stunning. So now we just say it all the time about ourselves. We're stunning. We're stunning. We're stunning. So we just stunning. text each other randomly as well and say, stunning. <laughs> you, yeah. we're stunning. Yeah. I love it. It was one day in Sister Michael's office, we were trying to film the scene, I think with Father Peter, and the room is like, is it like smoke that you pump in? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, like a mist. Just, yeah, like a mist and things. So, and there was like really hot lights and you're in the uniform and Claire always has every bit of the uniform on correctly. So you're just boiling <laughs> and you're just sort of losing it. And then like, what I love as well is they have us always together, like this close <laughs> to one another and shoved on a bench. But then, like, Jamie Lee's stomach started grumbling and then Saoirse... Oh, like a cat. Like, kind of like a cat. And then Saoirse has this, like, real growly voice. <laughs> and, like, so, and it was just like, I was shaking with laughter in the chair. I just le heard Lisa go, oh, Nicola, come on. I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Or when we were practising the dance, we were talking about this last oh night. My oh, my God. God. I've never told him about that because... No, I haven't either. Did, people did know. No, no, I'm I'm what, what, what is this? Oh, so <laughs> you were practising the dance. so funny. We were pretty oh detailed then, because obviously we were all practicing like the dance at the end. So we went down, and of course, Louisa was taking it really seriously, which is always <laughs> nice. And we were like drinking wine, all ha, ah, this will be great. And then we were in Dylan's apartment, <laughs> and we started doing that. And we were taking it seriously, and we were just sort of giggling a bit because we couldn't get it. And then <laughs> Nicola or Saoirse got too warm, so she went to take off her jumper and pulled everything up and got her bibs out by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so we all ran over. And all the gears actually surrounded me from Dylan. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> so I pulled the jumper down and then Louisa was like, right, that's it, I'm leaving. That's it, we're like, I asked oh, a no, question, and then I, I farted as well. <laughs> <laughs> I asked a question I shouldn't have. I said, did that hurt? <laughs> it was a piercing, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Shannon, you've got your legs. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, you, you guys are telling stories. <laughs> <laughs> I was leaving that pillow. And no one yeah, didn't. Yeah, that was too much. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's going to have to feature in series two. <laughs> the nipple piercing's going to have to feature. Now, OK, <laughs> so... <laughs> 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 oh, it's talk much. <laughs> I love young boys. Uh, so, okay, final question. Oh, this is a good one. The ending of series one was an unexpected tearjerker. Can we expect more touching moments, Lisa, from series two? Yeah, so the, 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 there's something like um, of that scale for, <laughs> not, not, not as not as sad as that but yeah touching I would say and, and but I think you sort of have to earn it so it'll be at the, the end probably as okay, well so yeah. all that comedy all the laughs and then at the end you're, you're going to have that little bit of pathos as yeah well. hopefully hopefully people <laughs> just don't go I don't care that was, that was, <laughs> but yeah that's the idea anyway so Okay, um, sadly, we are going to have to end, which uh, I, I'm gutted about. So, uh, I'm, I'm just going to, I know you're not in order, but Lisa, Liz, Mike, Saoirse, Jamie Lee, Louisa, Nicola, Dylan, thank you so very much. Thank indeed. you. Thank you. Thank you.